the great search brought to you by DigiKey and Adafruit. Thanks, DigiKey. Every single week, Lady Data user power of engineering to help you. Yes, you find the things that you need on digikey.com. Lady Data, what is the great search of this week? This week's great search is solder paste. Uh, I was showing on Desk of Lady Ada how to rework uh, this board. Uh, I can go to the overhead, I'll show it real fast. I was reworking this board, which had uh, a module with under pads. The pads are on the bottom of the module. And so you have to, you can't solder this by hand. You have to solder it with a hot air station or a hot plate. In this case, I was using a hot plate. Um, and I was using a syringe with solder paste. This is a go-to technique. I mean, this board is going to be tossed. So um, I'll just show what it's like. But, you know, if you need to uh, put some paste down. Um, I find a syringe to be uh, great. Let's see, I'll, just, I'll use the zoom in feature again. Um, with the rework, how are you sure the pins don't bridge with solder? Um, very carefully. <laughs> you, don't, you don't put too much. Uh, you but get you used to it. Uh, there you go. Maybe move it oh, so sorry. it seems a little bit better. Yeah, I know. You might want to zoom out a little bit. Yeah, I know. I'm just, I'm getting used to, whoa, yeah. too much. Hold on, let me see if I can. I'm just kind of messing around. That's not too bad. That's good. Okay. Um, so yeah, I mean, you would put some paste down, and then you could, uh, you know, hot air it to to get it to bubble, um, and and cover the pads, or use the tip of a soldering iron. Um, either way, uh, you know, or if I'm just even uh, reworking uh, chips that have pins on the outside, um, a little bit of paste, especially because the flux is already in it. It's 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 sitting in flux. It's a great and easy way to do SMT rework. And um, this is kind of one of the one of the tricks and secrets. If you have um, paste, uh, solder paste in a syringe, um, you don't need to have very fine wire. It's, sometimes it's very hard to heat up the uh, wire solder, especially if you're having a very fine tip and very fine pitch parts. Um, luckily, you can get solder paste uh, from DigiKey and you can get it overnighted if you want to keep it cold. Uh, but personally, you know, at work, we keep the solder paste in the fridge to keep it nice and cold at temperature. Um, at home, you know, if I'm just messing around, I keep it in a cool, dark area and it lasts quite a while as long as it doesn't dry out. So let's go to DigiKey. Okay, so uh, let's search for solder paste. So you can get all sorts of different solder paste. Um, it's going to be under solder. So solder paste comes in basically two or three different uh, containers. So it comes in tubs. This is what you use on a um, paste printer because, you know, you scoop it out and you put it down on the, on the stencil and then the squeegee squeegees it down. We have tons of videos that we show on our Wednesday show if you want to see what this looks like, um, the automation process. And then, of course, you can get it, like I said, as a uh, tube. There's two sizes of tubes. There's like mega tubes. Uh, this is 600 grams. So this is as much, sorry, this is more solder than this tub. Um, and these are actually, the big ones are for automated uh, stencil deposition machines. Usually like normally a human doesn't hold a half a kilogram, more than half a kilogram of, um, it's like a sausage worth of solder paste. Uh, usually you'll want to go with the smaller, you know, 35 gram. This one uh, that I've got here, I think is 35 grams too. Yeah, yeah, 35 grams. So 35 grams is in less is what I suggest. A 35 gram um, solder paste syringe can last you a very long time, by the way, like easily a year or two. Like this, you know, is from 2020. So it they last quite a quite a long time. So you get the smallest one you can get. Um, so let's uh go to stacking. Let's start with it's only active and let's only get a syringe because it's only what we're looking for. And then there's a couple different options. Um, so there's leaded and there's lead free. So this is the first kind of differentiator we wanna make. Chances are, if you're manufacturing in the industry, you're all lead free anyway. So of course you're gonna select lead free. If you're soldering at home, um, you can use leaded solder or there's some industries where leaded solder is acceptable. Um, you know, when I'm doing rework, again, if I'm doing prototypes at home, and especially if I have something that is, um, you know, very, t like I need to be able to rework it very easily. Leaded solder is going to be easier to rework. You know, it doesn't go to a customer. Um, I'll do that at home. Otherwise, I use a lead free. Lead free needs a higher temperature of rework. So you need um, hot plates and hot 
air guns that can go up to that temperature, like 240 degrees, you know, 250 or higher, uh, leaded needs a lower temperature. Um, that said, uh, I think I'm going to just select lead free because um, I'm going to assume that you guys need lead free. So I'm going to uh, not select 6337 or 6337. That's the a lead PB is lead. Okay. Next up. Flux type, no clean or water soluble. This is sneaky. A lot of people are like, oh, I want it with water soluble. I want it to be like, you know, cleanable. If you get flux that's water soluble, you must clean it because it's actually more activated. So unless you have a water washing system um, that you're going to put your boards through, you should select no clean. There's nothing wrong with no clean. I mean, it leaves a little bit of residue. Um, but that residue is non-conductive and it's not harmful for your electronics and it's protective. It's like the, the flux that covers it. I personally always use no, no clean. I've used no clean. All of Ada for uses no clean. Um, there's no reason for us to wash. If you have boards that you want to wash or you have a washer, go with water soluble otherwise. No. Okay, next up, um, mesh type three, four, five. Uh, so I was actually like, what is the difference? I know at the at Adafruit for our stencil machine, we actually use mesh four because we have 0.4 millimeter pitch uh, parts that we use. If you're using 0.4 millimeter pitch, yes, you'll want maybe mesh four. If you're using, you know, 0201s, 0105s, sorry, 0105s, you can use four or five. I just Googled really quickly and there's like, you know, some nice web pages that talk about um the the sizes of the um the solder balls in general though like pretty much everyone uses three um this paste that i have here is 25 to 40 this is actually oh funny this is no sorry yeah mine is type three so this is a type three i use type three for pretty much everything again other than uh 0.4 millimeter or smaller you know bga components really fine apertures you'll want four or five otherwise three is perfectly fine and it's the most common okay so i only have four options left so now there's um so these are both from uh these are all four of these are from chip quick uh which will surprise me chip quick makes a lot of uh rework uh stuff especially home rework or small scale rework um, they have two types of products here. One is, you'll see here the differences in the temperatures. One has like 220 degrees C uh, melting point. That's going to be your standard lead-free solder. And then they have this low temp 138C. Uh, so the 138C stuff, again, it, that's really low temperature. I mean, that's low enough that a very hot component will desolder itself, right? Which you probably don't want so um keep in mind what you're using it for 138c is, is not very warm um if you're doing i think rework where you're removing parts i think people tend to like that because it's easier to keep everything you know the, the board stays pretty hot on your hot plate you can remove and rework stuff very easily that said i i don't actually use the low temp stuff that much um but chip quick is famous for it uh try it out but for general purpose I tend to use, you know, your standard lead free, you know, um, 1096 silver three copper, you know, point, you know, 96.5, 3.5. And then um, finally they, they have what's left and there's two versions. One is uh, a 35 gram and one is a 15 gram um same equipment you know same same material and everything just one is a little smaller it's five cc's not 10 cc's honestly i would just get like unless you really need a lot just get this you know it's about half the price 35 grams is a lot uh you unless you're really making a lot of boards um you know if you're just doing prototypes at home you do a couple prototypes a week uh, i think this uh 15 gram syringe of lead-free no clean solder paste will do great. Another nice thing is, um, as you can see, it comes with the plunger and um, the tip also. So the dispenser tip and you can get other dispenser tips from DigiKey. We will cover that next week. Um, I tend to use the the yellow tip, whatever that size is. Uh, but depending, you know, it, it doesn't really matter. Just depends on uh, whether you'd like to be able to squeeze more in one squeezing. But this is my pick. And that's a great search.
Where in the world is